Hi folks, today we're going to be changing an inlet knock sensor on an EPA-10 Detroit Diesel 1 box. Now this one is an EPA-10, but if you're working on a GHD-14 or GHD-17 or even a different maker model, the procedure is generally the same. The mounting locations for the sensor body and such might be different, but it's easily figured out. The first thing you'll want to do is remove any steps or fairings or anything else that might be in your way. On this particular model, the Detroit One box, the inlet knock sensor is mounted in the top of the box, towards the rear. These sensors consist of two separate pieces. One piece sits in the exhaust flow, the other piece is remotely mounted. The remotely mounted sensor body, or brains of the operation, is connected to the engine through four wires. The sensor receives power, ground, and a data connection to the engine computer or after-treatment controller. In this particular configuration of the one box, this remote mounted piece of the sensor sits inside a separate box mounted on top of the one box. This is the sensor box. Removing one screw from the front of the sensor box will let you remove the lid. Now once you're inside this box, it looks like there's a lot going on, but it's not too bad. You've got both of your knock sensor bodies mounted in here, and also two pressure sensors for the DPF. You're probably going to want to remove any plastic ties or any holders that are holding wiring in your way. Get them out of your way so you have a little bit of room to work. The inlet knock sensor on this one is mounted on the front side of the box, towards the front of the vehicle. Two screws identical to the one that holds on the cover of the box will remove the sensor. In this picture, the screws are already removed and the electric connector has already been removed as well. This can be a pretty tight spot to work, let alone get a camera in here, but I try to get a couple of shots of the overall layout of the box. The wiring for both knock sensors exits out of the rear corner of the box. This leads us over to where the inlet knock sensor is mounted. Now, removing this part of the sensor is probably the most difficult part of the job. They can really get seized in there over time. If at all possible, you'd like to keep the sensor intact for warranty purposes. This means the best way to get the sensor out is with a cutaway socket, kind of like what you would use to remove an oxygen sensor from a car. This is what we have here. It's either a 7 8 or 22 millimeter socket. They're roughly the same size. Here it is shown with a new sensor inside of it. Now your first instinct to remove something that's seized in is to heat it up. But I've actually had better luck with the opposite. It's usually best to wait till the exhaust is cooled down to room temperature. That's when you'll have your best chance at getting these out undamaged. Diagnosing these sensor problems often requires running the truck and putting a lot of heat into that exhaust system. So if I'm in a hurry sometimes, I'll even cool the area with water just to make it easier to get it out. Here you'll see just how tough these can be to move. This one is actually still considered pretty good though because this cutaway socket is still able to move it. Oftentimes it just won't work and you'll need to cut the top of the sensor off and put a regular six point socket on it to get it out. Just keep at it and eventually you'll have it out. Now to avoid any issues installing the new sensor, it's always a good idea to clean up the threads in the exhaust. To do this you'll need either a tap or some sort of thread chaser, particularly an M20 by 1.5. Run the tap down through the threads until it bottoms out. This will clean the threads up and make it much easier to install the sensor without damaging it. After using the tap, the sensor can be threaded in almost entirely by hand. Refer to the manufacturer's manual for the final torque spec. This is a quick shot of a newer knock sensor next to the old one that was being replaced. Notice how the newer one has a plastic backing on it. The older ones tended to rod out where the aluminum backing touched up against that steel box. Now all there is left to do is mount the other end of the sensor inside the box, reconnect the electrical connector for the knock sensor and any other sensors you may have unplugged to make room to work. And the absolute most important thing to do 
is to properly tie up the wiring so it doesn't rub on anything inside the box, including other wires. I've seen countless problems caused only by wiring chafing against itself or other objects and setting fault codes. Here are a couple of the many, many codes that could cause you to eventually replace a NOx sensor. So that just about does it for this video. If you like what you see, go ahead and uh, hit the like button, subscribe for more, and as always, thanks for watching.